Welcome to our Thursday seminar session, Stress Less, Relax More. My name is Furkan from Inner Space Covent Garden in London. Um, so the session is Stress Less and Relax More. So let's do a short meditation, like a relaxation exercise, and then I'll tell you what we are going to talk about. Um, and then, and that's it really. So make sure you're comfortable. Your back is straight, your shoulders are down. You can close your eyes or keep them open, it's up to you. Gently but quickly turn your attention inside to your breath firstly. You hear everything around you, you're aware. But just keep your attention on your breath. To observe how gentle it is. It can be really soothing just to observe, hear your own breath. And now bring your attention to your face. Check your forehead. Make your eyes gentle. Relaxing your eyelids, the corners of your eyes. Maybe imagine you're looking at something very pleasant and your eyes become very gentle, the energy behind them becomes quite positive. Relaxing your jaw, your cheeks. You're just creating the thought in your mind, relaxation, and your body will feel the signal instantly. Relaxing your neck, extending it, bringing your shoulders down and back. And imagine that pleasant feeling from your eyes that relaxation moves down your shoulders, your arms. Down your chest, your back. Relaxing every single muscle. Every single cell in your body. Just with your thoughts. And if any other thoughts come, that's absolutely fine. You just watch them. And they lose their power. You don't go into stories, but you come back to your abdomen, relaxing all the organs, making them really calm. And imagine your body thanks you for this relaxation. And it's not kidding yourself, but it's really believing the power of your thoughts, how they affect your thoughts, your body, your physiology. And now imagine this energy moving down your legs, relaxing the muscles, bones, all 
all the way down to your toes. And now feel the space that your body takes up and see how your energy changed. You might have, you might feel lighter or maybe even more tired because you allowed yourself to relax. So just have a look and you, this is something you can try before bed, for example. Um, so it's, it's a good exercise to, to do and to have the conviction behind your thoughts that your thoughts really do this to your body. It does to everything. They're so powerful. Um, so today what we're going to talk about is understanding stress, um, some of the side effects. I mean, we all know we don't need to talk about that too much. Uh, but then what we can do, how we can deal with it, how we can use it actually to our advantage. Um, and then for that, we need to understand where stress starts. And then we need to give a new definition to stress, make it more constructive for us so we can, like I said, use it for our advantage. And then um, how we can implement these things to use stress to our advantage, what would be the strategies we can use. So I'll talk about those. And then some practical daily tips and tools. Um, and then if we have time, we can do another short meditation. And then I'll talk about a product at the end um, you might find useful. So in terms of understanding stress, uh, first is to understand, is it something necessary? Should we have any at all? So it is in our psyche, definitely, in our physiology. So we have that's built in us. And it can be useful in terms of taking precautions. Um, yes, like putting yourself out of dangerous situations and to protect yourself, it can definitely help. But then when we look at the stress that we have around us, the stress that we expose ourselves to, the stress we are exposed to, it's almost like 24 seven. And imagine you gave your body stress hormones 24 seven, you don't need cortisol in the same level like you would need it in the morning to wake up and function. But with the stress, we have cortisol, adrenal, adrenaline, all of that constantly being pumped into our body um, due to the stress that we put ourselves through. Um, so that's the one we are talking about, this chronic stress, how we can uh, deal with it and how we can uh, transfer, transform it in, and use it for our benefit. Um, so stress is not good for you when you have this chronic stress. It's extremely damaging for the body. And in terms of negative effects, we all know it affects sleep. And what happens to you when you can't sleep properly? Your immune system definitely weakens. And especially now with COVID, we really need to look after our immune system more than anything else. It will affect your decision making, even simple things, um, buying what kind of sandwich would be difficult. You know? So it's, it's quite damaging. Um, so to start dealing with stress, first, I need to realize that I'm stressed. So um, there are obvious symptoms, signs and symptoms we, we, we know, but then there are some that are not obvious. So we will look at that in a bit. So I need to first know my signs and symptoms, first really understand that this is coming from stress. And secondly, I look at, I look at my triggers, you know, what causes these things what causes me to get stressed? It could be situations, people, whatever, or my own own belief systems, etc. So number three, and then I need to choose how I want to respond in this situation. Because I can't keep doing the same thing and I will get the same result, of course. So in terms of uh, knowing my signs and symptoms, it would be we'll talk about that later on how you can you know make an audit for this. But let's look at some of the not so obvious symptoms that I found um, quite eye opening. And then knowing these things also really help us not to be hard on ourselves. So we understand I'm acting in this way because of stress, for example. Um, so some of the examples are you would lose your sense of humor, for example, you would become very touchy. Um, not making, not being able to make decisions, like I mentioned before, getting irritated or impatient, 
and that is let's say if you find yourself start thinking that people around you are being very slow or stupid actually you are not a horrible person that only sees defects but you're actually somebody who might be quite stressed because when you're under stress everything will feel slow because it's almost like you're running from the lion and the person in your team taking their time and they don't know the lion is coming so it's a bit like that things will feel slower and you get really impatient and yeah and usually when we feel like that we feel bad about ourselves even subconsciously we, we might be blaming others and situations but subconsciously we feel bad about ourselves so don't feel bad about yourself and don't blame stress but understand that that's what's happening um, or you will see the things that are not in order let's say you go into a room and you see the chair that's not aligned first because again that's like um, something that's not in order means it might be blocking your escape route you know that's the subconscious reaction so if you're seeing defects and wrong things again you're not a critical person maybe maybe you're just stressed um, <clears throat> so why do we have symptoms it's of course good to have symptoms imagine you had an illness and you didn't have any symptoms then it would be quite late by the time you got to find out that you had this problem um, so that's a good thing so love your symptoms but then know what to do with them okay so that's the first thing and the second thing is uh, looking at what is causing me to be stressed in the situation finding your triggers the root cause of these symptoms so what happened um, that i'm feeling in this way and we will talk about that later on looking at these triggers and then thirdly, of course, you need to choose your stress response. How you are going to respond to this? What will you do? Because stress is an energy. You can't just ignore it. You know, it's there. You can't just say, oh, I'll, I'll go to bed and wake up and it will be fine. We need to do something with it. And what do we do normally if we feel helpless? You know, if we feel out of power, we either suppress it or we express it in the way that might not come out so nice if we didn't understand the root cause. Um, in terms of suppressing, it could be something like, let's say you have a problem at work, maybe with an individual, they're giving you a hard time and you don't know what to do with that. And you come, you say, you know, okay, when I go home, when I have some peace, I will think about what I can do about this situation or why this is happening to me. But you go home and you say, you know what, I can't, I can't even think about this. I don't want to think about this. You turn on Netflix and maybe you watch loads of episodes or something. So that would be a kind of suppressing. Or you, you sleep a lot or you eat a lot or something like that to suppress that pain that you don't want to look at. Or it could be expressing. It could be in the way that you might not look at the situation Maybe you blame yourself or you blame the other person or the situation and you call somebody and tell them about the situation and maybe they'll agree with you and you just, you know, offload and, but then you haven't solved the problem. So that would, uh, that would be expressing it in the way that you don't know the root cause. So what do we need to do then if we can't suppress and express it because it's, it's something that we can't just get rid of, it's an energy. So you need to work with this energy you need to transform it to benefit from it so what does that mean to transform it means you need to give a new definition you need to look at this situation in a different way from a different perspective to be able to do that of course i need to first understand where stress starts and i'm sure you you guessed it already and you know it already most probably where does it start it all starts in my perception in my thinking you perceive the situation the person is worried overwhelmed so you feel stressed about it maybe because you feel uncomfortable about the situation that you are put put in you feel you're not confident enough to deal with this or maybe you feel that time is not on your side there is never enough time but again, this is your perception. Somewhere something has gone a bit um, not, um, 
not helping you the way you, you need to deal with it. Um, and I can give you an example. Let's say when I go back home, um, I help my family in, in, the, in the jobs that they do, farming, let's say. And then for me, it's a lot of fun. There's no stress involved at all. And for my mom, for example, the same thing would be so stressful, although maybe she's not doing anything because of her age. But she feels so stressed because in her mind, the scenario is what if this goes wrong? What if I mean, all the next steps she's worrying already um, for the autumn, but we are in the summer, you know, all that kind of story she has in her head. But for me, I just go there, help. Um, and if something happens, it will affect all of us. But I'm, I'm so much enjoying the situation that I don't really have time to think about those scary scenarios. And, and I don't see the point. But because she feels the burden of responsibility, the same situation feels completely different for us. So that responsibility of, um, and also the habit of creating scenarios, you know, and she also says the same thing that she thinks a lot. So maybe she should watch this. Anyway, so that's, uh, that's an example from my, my personal situation, but you know, I'm sure you have your own examples. And then what happens is when you are feeling overwhelmed like this in your mind, either you will have um, the be one situation and you will have all these confused thoughts and you don't know what to do with them. You know, it just goes round and round in your head. You can't just get any solution because your mind is so noisy with one thing. Or you will feel stressed because you have so much to do that all these tasks will come to your mind in one go and you don't know what to do because our brain is not designed for multitasking. You can only think a few things at a time. You can't you know, hold information in your head all the time. It's stressful, even if they might be small. And then what happens is, this is the situation. It almost becomes a cycle. You think in that way, you feel in that way, and you, you respond in that way. So what I really need to do is, um, I need to understand that my thoughts will become my feelings uh, because you think and think and think it sings in your heart and you start to feel it and then the way you feel the way you act and that becomes a habit when you act and the more you do it it becomes your personality and after some time it, it becomes your reality you, you you are convinced that that's the situation and that's the only way to deal with it but maybe it wasn't like that when you first started. So I really need to understand what's going on in my head, in my heart, um, so that I can quieten my mind and then see these steps to help myself, to understand why am I stressed, why I am stressed and what I can do about it. And of course, the only thing I can control is what's going on in my mind. I can't control situations, people, so that's the only thing I can do. So I, I think it's a good place to start. Um, so what do I need to do? I need two things in my mind. One, one kind of uh, power is the power that gives me to just think about the thing that I'm dealing with at the moment rather than everything that I, I need to deal with. And what happens usually is there are so many things that's stressing me out, I think, and then I don't do anything. You know? So that could be one thing. So one thing is something that will, some kind of power in my mind to help me just deal with it next and next without panicking. And the other thing is some kind of inner power, that mental power that will tell me to stop when I go into these scary, oh my God, what if scenarios. So these two things I need and how do we get those things? We, we'll talk about that later on. So, this is stress, that's what I need to do. I need to define it in this way. But also I need to understand where I want to go. So let's have a look at these things. So firstly, um, I need to give a new definition to stress. So that's the second mechanism I talked about, the new, almost like the new information I give to myself to reduce or eliminate that stress. So I need to give a new definition to stress. So what's the new definition? Stress is a message, it's a messenger. It's trying to tell me something. 
because it's it's like the symptom isn't it? it gives me pain it gives me discomfort and it's telling me that i need to change something maybe i need to learn something or heal something because the i can only change myself right i can't do anything else and the way i'm thinking about the situation my perception is not helping me i'm not saying the situation is right and there's something wrong with me or whatever i'm just saying my perception is not helping me if i can change my perception in a way that is beneficial to me and then i can see that actually in that situation maybe there is something that will help me to become stronger much wiser much happier happier and more in control as a person so if i can feel this in stressful situations then i can start thinking in a more curious way like oh i wonder why i'm feeling like this and what can i do hmm, maybe i can do this i can do that so without taking anything personal you know feeling bad about it rather than saying oh my god why me you know why feeling almost like a victim um, so yeah so that's why i need to do getting curious about the situation and and, and thinking oh what oh why, why is this happening why am i feeling this way and what can i do um, so you become curious and then the more you do this the more you you tr start to trust yourself you start to trust life uh, it really quietens your mind you know you stop asking all those why why questions and you you, you become really uh, proactive in your mind so that's the definition of stress and how I, how I can look at it. And then the, we need to also understand where we want to go and that's relaxation. And the definition of relaxation is quite different. It's not like um, just chilling out and doing, doing um, nothing that would stress me out, but it's actually quite different. Um, it's uh, when I say something to my mind, my mind listens to me but my body also follows. Let's say if I have a, uh, a job interview, for example, and I'm prepared, I can say to myself, you don't need to be scared, you've done your best. And your, your body is also fine. You're not having palpitations and knots in your stomach. So that kind of relaxation. This is when you have the power to respond in the way you want, when you feel free, when you feel that you have a choice, this means relaxation. Then you can be relaxed in any situation. So this is almost like a very liberated way to live in. And if you find yourself relax, uh, finding difficult to relax and, and um, integrate relaxation in, in your life in this way, um, and even, even just to think about relaxation, maybe look at your belief system, what it means for you to relax. Maybe you think when you relax, you will, uh, you will be kind of a laid back person. You will be seen as irresponsible, slow or unproductive, whatever. Um, but actually when you can have some kind of relaxation in your life, which we will talk about later on, it will be easier to switch off at night. You will sleep better. Um, you will, your tasks will take shorter and etc. So look at also your belief system in terms of what relaxation means for you. So quite high level of definitions of relaxation and stress. And I can say from my personal experience and my, my colleagues and my friends are in space, it's, it takes time to do all this. Um, and um, you know what happens is maybe when you first start let's say if something stressed me out for a week maybe now it will stress me out for for a day if i thought about something for one day maybe now i can stop my mind in an hour stop chewing about that scary scenario so things get easier and of course again it depends on the situation you know but what happens is when you can achieve something you know you when you can respond in the way you want, that energy is so liberating and so rewarding that you know you really want to look after yourself in this way. It's a beautiful space to be in. And uh, no TED Talk or Tony Robbins um, 
videos they'll give you that kind of um, energy when you do it yourself it's it's really really liberating but so how am i going to get this energy where am i going to get this power from how am i going to do this so let's talk about some strategies step so the first thing to do is uh, like uh, i mentioned you need to know what what your symptoms are you know in terms of um, stress so take a stress out audit what makes you stress and then your symptoms you can do this for a day week month however you you, you start you know finding your patterns and and your responses <coughs> So what pressures you? So first, maybe, you know, find your symptoms if you don't know, but then look at the things that pressure you. So some examples I can share. Sorry, frog in my throat. It could be comparing. Maybe when you start comparing yourself and you look around, you feel stressed, maybe. Maybe if you feel lack of confidence in a certain situation or in front of an individual that might be stressful self-esteem is a very very stressful so i think if it's low uh, making for example assumptions about other people's expectations maybe somebody gave you a job to do you thought oh today maybe but actually they don't need it for a week so maybe these assumptions not being able to say no Maybe you have some problems with time management. Uh, maybe like you usually underestimate how long things will take or you give people less time. Oh, I can do this in two hours, but maybe actually you didn't think. Maybe it will take four hours. Maybe you just wanted to please them, whatever. Uh, so the thing to do is just observe your mind as much as you can without judging as if you're doing it for someone else. Catch yourself before your thoughts spiral into these scary scenarios. And even if you can't do this in the moment, maybe stop. You know, just look back at your day, uh, maybe at lunchtime or your afternoon break when you have your coffee break. Like put some um, uh, kind of times in, in your day to go, go back and look what stressed me out, what happened here. Because sometimes we, we plan our day and we say, oh, I can do this, it's all right. But by the time it, it hits lunchtime, I'm already overwhelmed. You know, what happened? What happened? I got to know. But usually we don't even have time to uh, look at these and we go home and we're just so exhausted on the sofa. Um, so create some time during the day, go back and look what caused me stress and just it won't take long, you know, five minutes, maybe less. Just write it down. And then later on, you can, the next thing to do is to reflect on, on the solution. Maybe, maybe one solution is just you didn't write things down and you forgot. It could be simple as that. Um, or one of those things that you found, you didn't ask for how long. Uh, you should spend time on this or how detailed it should be a task and then you just you know, it could be anything so what would be the solution and when you start reflecting on on things like this your mind will slow down definitely and your your answer will come from your mind because you are the only person actually who knows your own story you will find your own solution much easily or, or you will read a solution somewhere or somebody will say something, your, your brain will pick up that information because you've been thinking about it. You know, what is the solution? But if we say, oh, why, why me? I hate this. It's like, you know, I've closed my mind to opportunities to see the answers, if that makes sense. So that's the first thing to do. Looking at your uh, triggers and then reflecting on your solutions. And again, for this, you know, this reflection time, this writing time or whatever time or talking to somebody you trust, that will give you the time, that will give you the ability to find the solution. So that's one. And, and there is a, another strategy that's about fear. Um, so understanding your fear. So first thing to understand is fear is almost like a psychological game when you when your 
consciousness is trying to hold on to something familiar. So if you have fear, usually it's because you are about to come out of your comfort zone, you're doing something that you think outside your ability or it's something you haven't done before. And, and the quicker you adapt to this new situation, the better it will be. So, the, so you know the situation is scaring you and you understand that, oh, actually, this is a sign that I'm about to grow. You know, I'm about to do something bigger than I've done before, even if it's tiny. So that's a good thing, isn't it? To be better, to be stronger. Um, so understanding that. And then while you are you know, working on this situation, whatever, you, you're compassionate with yourself. You're not like a perfectionist saying, oh, you've got to do this. You, you're gentle with yourself. You're not like... Uh, forcing yourself to do something, but with understanding, with skills, with planning. So let's, let me give you an example. That, for example, you can do something called visualization, uh, creating a mindset. So you think about it, you really feel it in your heart, and then it's much easier to put into action. Uh, for example, um, athletes do this, professional athletes, um, they visualize their race again and again. Let's say you're going to have a difficult conversation and, and I, I've done this and, and I found it really, really helpful. You have to have a conversation and, you know, when you think about it, you say, oh God, I don't want to do this. It's so stressful. But you just do it in, in your imagination, in your mind. So you, you think about the situation, what you will say, what the other person says. You can't guess what they will say, but, you know, I'm practicing and until you feel comfortable with your dialogue, you do this. It's almost like rehearsing. And when the situation comes, I promise you, it will be much easier to do this. And the key is really to act on this fear as soon as possible. Before your logical mind, the, the voice of the fear speaks to you out of uh, doing this. So don't do that. Let's do that. So that's the second thing. And the third thing is called... Uh, going to the eye of the storm. So when your mind is going crazy about the stressful situation, you you do something inside. You calm your mind with a thought. And that thought, because we usually know our situations that, that will give us stress, it's almost like a mantra uh, that you repeat to yourself before the situation. And then when the situation comes, it will come to your mind much easier because you've been repeating it. Um, so let's say something unexpected happens and you say, oh my God, this is horrible. And your mind goes, blah, 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 blah. And you instantly stop your mind. So an anchor thought would be, everything happens for me, not to me. Meaning I'm not a victim. There is something here I can use for my benefit. Everything happens for me, even though I don't know this. Um, or it could be life would never give me something more than I can uh, deal with. So you can just repeat to yourself. And even if you don't feel it in that situation, it will calm your mind at that time. And then uh, when, when you need a solution, you know, it, it's uh, much easier, uh, much easier to deal with, um, to, to find that solution because your mind is calming. Um, and, and the solution also, rather than thinking, thinking, thinking about unresolvable situations, your mind holds on to this solution. That's also like going to the eye of the storm. Or another thing we can call is going to the eye of the storm in a stressful situation. Uh, you, you don't look at what the situation should be like or the person should be like. So you look at what I should be like. Let's say... The person in front of you who is stressing you is bullying you, working on you know, um, pushing down you on your self-esteem. And you practice being assertive, you know, holding yourself high. So that's what you focus on. And what happens is when you focus on when you when you focus on what you need to do, again your mind is quieter. There aren't too many thoughts. 
and then usually what happens is in, in stressful situations, if you can practice what you want to do, let's say self-esteem, assertiveness here, usually either the, the person in the situation moves out of your life or they don't bother you anymore. So because it's almost like life told you to practice something and you did it and then the situation moves away. So, um, and then, yeah, sometimes. And another strategy, so we talked about, you know, understanding your symptoms, your triggers, and then looking at your fears, um, et cetera, et cetera. But then also we need to, uh, before the stressful situation comes, uh, or, or in general, actually, how I can reduce my exposure to stress. And there are three things we can do. We can stop trying to control everything around us. We all have good intentions, but if you stop doing that, you will save yourself a lot of stress. An example for this may be, you have a problem with someone and they're not talking to you. And you said, if it's my, my mistake, I apologize. Maybe it wasn't your mistake, but you did your bit and they're still a bit funny, can you let go? If you can't, means you're trying to control those, that person. But no, let go. Again, how? You can repeat those thoughts to yourself again and again. I've done my best. It's not my stuff. Again, it takes time, like anything. No? And the other thing is very important at this time, especially watching the news, hearing stories. You've got to stop controlling, uh, stop um, consuming other people's stress. Because if you're like that, you can't help anyone. You can't even help yourself if you constantly um, take in other people's um, negative, upset, down energy. Um, and you might want to look online how the energy levels, the thought levels, uh, how high, like fear is here, you know, compassion is there. There's a scale, of emotional scale, you can have a look. So what kind of energy you want to vibrate out to help yourself and others? So stop consuming other people's stress. In terms of news, just watch as much as you need to. And the third thing is stop interfering in other people's business uh, if you haven't been asked to. You know, let people solve their own problems sometimes. Not that we leave them alone when they need help, but just, you know, be honest and be clear that sometimes we don't need to help people, but they, they need to find their own way um, so that's that and a few tips and tools um, like practical things you can do in this situation one is breathing technique find a breathing technique that really helps you and they're amazingly helpful there's so much research in that I mean, there's for example a breathing technique called box breathing so you inhale five seconds hold Exhale, hold, like a box. It switches off your uh, sympathetic nervous system and you go into relaxation mode almost instantly. Even if you don't feel it, your body has already done it. Box breathing, inhale, hold, exhale, hold, five seconds each. There are loads of them, so have a look online. And second thing is, if you're in a stressful situation and if you can stop, stop and do something that gives you joy. Maybe watch a funny funny video or play a nice music, a uh, piece of music, go in the garden, um, call someone and talk about something else. Dance, whatever, even for, for five minutes. And, um, and the other thing, I talked about it before, uh, just write the things you need to do. You can prioritize your list later on, but you've got to write it down because you can't hold information. Too many information, too much information. Um, and the other thing is, um, I, I talked about in going into the eye of the storm as well, but when you're doing things, maybe find another focus for yourself. You know, I, I have so much to do, but maybe today my focus is I'm going to do them slowly, peacefully, or kindly, or happily. But I find another kind of um, Let's say if people are stressed at work, say today at work I will stay peaceful and I'll do everything. So even if you have finished, if you, even if you couldn't finish everything, maybe you will have stayed peaceful. Um, 
being mindful of while you, you are doing things. Maybe have your coffee mindfully today. Uh, maybe have your commute mindfully. Watch, observe, you know, put your phone in your pocket. Or you can do the muscle relaxation exercise before bed, um, et cetera, et cetera. So those are things. Um, another thing is you can set up some time for yourself to do something you like. And I've started doing this. I realize I haven't been reading the, the, the books that I like for a while. So I said, you know, from January, 20 minutes, I'm just going to lie down and read the book I like. And that's what I'm doing. And, and I, I had to tell my friends so that I would keep it, keep my promise. So I'm doing that. And I find it amazingly, amazingly relaxing just because I, I respected my, my choice in that moment. Okay, so that's it really. I um, hope you found some things useful and hope you find the um, what is it? Find the energy and, and uh, enthusiasm to practice some of these things. And I think the main thing to believe is that you know I am the master of my mind. I am um, in control of everything that goes on in my mind. So that's a, that's the thought to hold on to. You know, it's it's all under my power. I might not feel it right now, but the more I do it, the more I feel. It. Um, so, um, in terms of um, the, the the book, I'll share it in a bit. But let's do like a two-minute relaxation, and then and then we can let's do a visualization, very short. So quickly turn your attention inside, and you might feel quite nice in your mind now. You know, hearing all these lovely things that give us, you know, encouragement. And imagine yourself sitting on a hill in the evening, watching the sunset. Your body is completely relaxed. Your mind is at peace. Your eyes are at peace. Your ears are at peace. The sun is setting peacefully and beautifully, watching all those colors. And you say to yourself, you know, I've done my best so far. And I know everything will work out all right. Like the sunset, the sunrise. Like the cycle of time, everything happens in its own time, so I can just do my best and trust life and myself. And gently bring your attention back. And that was like a minute. And I'm sure you, you felt some change. So you can do this and you've done it. Nobody else did it for you. So well done for relaxing already. And the book I'd like to recommend is called Learn to Relax by Mike George. I'll share it in the chat. And you can give us a call or email us. Um, let me, okay. There you go. And I'll share the picture as well. So that's the book, Learn to Relax by Mike George. It's 10 pounds um, postage. And you can email us at info at innerspace.org.uk or you can call us and we'll send it to you immediately. It's a lovely book with loads of examples like I shared, but deeper and more, um, with more um, in detail practice. So really, really useful. So have a look at that. Thank you everyone for joining us and give us some feedback. Tell everybody, and if you would like to support us in other ways, you can make donations as well. Just go back to our website, and that's about it, really. Have a wonderful evening.